Hi! So in this video, I'll show you how to compensate for a difference in space. Now, when I say that, I mean global space and local space. So as in the, like the object space of the actual object you're working with versus the actual global space. Now, as an example, in global space, a unit of one is exactly one meter. However, if you have an object that is 0 0.1 in scale, so a tenth of normal size, anything paired beneath that, if it was one unit away from the object, underneath the object's hierarchy, that would be a tenth of a meter or one decimeter. Now, how we can account for this, I'll show you right now. So, as a simple example, we over here have the exact thing we worked with last video. Now, this is a simple distance check that enables or disables this little cylinder in there based on how close you are to it. The only problem here is that this visual that we have for it, if we make this bigger, it won't work anymore because the sphere here is scaling based on local space to the object while the user distance value driver, the 0 0.5 here, is actually in global space. So it will still be around here. Now this is obviously not optimal because we made this little overlay here to make sure we know, always know how large it is. Now to fix this, we'll first scale this back down a bit, make it even a bit too small. So now it enables too fast, but it's out of the way we have to now grab the distance here and open it as a source, then pull out a node browser, go into operators, packing, and then we want to pack free and we want to pack and float free. This is because scale is interpreted as a float free. So we'll just put all of these in here. Now next, We'll simply go to the transform nodes, and in here we have conversion. So here we have global scale to local, as well as rotation to local and point to local. These work all similar, however, we'll be working with scale currently. So then we simply plug our scale value into here, and then we need an instance. Now this is the slot to which we want to actually translate to, what object we are wanting to affect. Now, intuitively you might think, oh yeah, let's, let's just grab the sphere itself and get a reference to it and plug that in, but that's actually incorrect, because the sphere is not its own space. However, the space of the sphere is one above, it's actually the distance check parent. So now we have two options. Either we get a get parent node and plug it directly into the sphere. That's useful for when you have stuff that you can deparent and parent to other things. Or if you know that your thing will never actually change parent, you can also hard reference the parent by just grabbing the parent instead and getting a reference to the parent. So now, we have exactly what this distance here means in local space, which is 0.75. Now next, we could simply go to the sphere here, go to the radius of the sphere, pull this out as a drive, so, oh, now it's at zero, and then plug this in. And you might notice that doesn't work. But the reason why that doesn't work is because we need to convert this back to a radius value, which we can do by going back to operators, then back up there to packing, and then we need unpack free, and we want a float free unpack. So now we simply grab this value, put it into here, and let's just grab the Y value. And now, as you can see, once more, does this actually control when we can see it? Now, if we scale this up now, 
you'll see that the sphere actually never changes size. It moves because the center is moving as we're scaling the object, but the actual sphere is staying exactly the same size globally. Now, currently, we're driving this. So, every single time we're changing this and translating it, this has to constantly be updating. However, maybe our object doesn't move dynamically, and we don't have to update it that often. What we can do in that case is we can actually go back and go to Interaction. There it is. Go to Grabbable, and then here we have on grabbable release and on grabbable grab. We'll get on grabbable released. So then we're gonna need a reference to the grabbable, which for which we just go to the parent and grab this reference here. Do a drive and then get rid of it. Oh. Interesting. Why is this not hooking up right now? Oh, we forgot to hook it up, that's why. There we go. And then get rid of it. Because we no longer need this, since we have it in here now. Next, since we're doing it this way now, we can actually... We can actually... Get rid of... Uh, not this. Uh, yeah, we can get rid of this, and we still do need this. Because what we need now is we need actions, and we need a write. And we'll get a value write of type float. Float? Where is it there? Then, we simply hook this up into here. Our value is what we get from the y here. And then we need a variable. Now, our variable is simply going to be the sphere's radius, which we have open here, and we'll get the source for it. Plug that into here, and now it's our variable for our value source. Now, if I scale this, you'll notice that at first the sphere gets bigger, but when I let go, it'll automatically adjust. Now, this is actually very nice. Because this means, instead of constantly updating this value, we only update this value when we actually have to. Now, depending on what you're working on, this might be ideal, this might not be ideal. So, keep in mind that while you may want to limit how often you update something, you have to look at what you're actually doing, and then decide what is the actual best use case for yourself. Because one difference here is also, we're now writing this value here. So instead of scaling this just inherently locally for everyone calculating, this now has to be written by a user and then synchronized over the network. So if we were to like do this a lot, this would constantly cause network updates to happen. Unlike the drive, which actually just did this entirely locally without ever having to network because the new scaling already gave it its value. But yeah, I hope this helps you in sizing things correctly. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave any suggestions below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!